I just listened to Jason Aldean's song, Try That in a Small Town. And as I'm at our farm in West Virginia at the moment, I can tell you half the things he brought up in that song won't fly here either or in any part of rural America that I've ever been to. Because this really comes down to it's a matter of right and wrong, constitutional versus unconstitutional, and establishment versus we the people. And I mean establishment everything, establishment government, establishment science, establish political parties, establishment do what we say uh, or else, get the jab or else, do this or else, close down your small business or else. It's unquestioned control, not a matter of what's constitutional or unconstitutional, not a matter of what's right and what's wrong, but you do what we tell you to do without asking questions, without any pushback whatsoever and without consequence. And the song merely highlights the ideological battle that is raging in America today and that I think this presidential election uh, is really about. Most of my opponents are all establishment candidates. They're all establishment hacks. And how you know is they're all playing the establishment game. Give me a dollar so I can get on the debate stage. Give me a dollar so that I can give all of the donor information because that's one of the requirements. All of my supporters, I'd have to give my data to the RNC in order to be on that debate stage. Well, most of my supporters and donors don't want uh, liberal candidates crammed down their throats 10 times a day by text and email and talk to like they are in first grade or kindergarten. They want respect. They don't, uh, they value freedom. They value independence. And right and wrong is more important to us. Constitutional versus unconstitutional is more important to us than we're the big bad party, do what we say. And his song, Try That in a Small Town, simply says that when you try to get us to do what it, to ignore wrong, it doesn't end well. And ladies and gentlemen, if there's not a greater warning to America, I can tell you the direction we're headed, uh, lawlessness, unjustness, uh, it doesn't end well for any empire or for any people. So I love America. I don't like when people hate on America. I don't like when people trample our flag, what represents our freedom and our constitution and the natural laws of God as we know them. I don't like that either. It rubs me the wrong way. It gets kind of a little burr under my saddle, get a little hot under the collar. It, it, it makes me upset. And we don't sit idly by. We don't just become keyboard warriors and talk about how, how bad things are and how much we hate it. We take action. And that's not violence. That is exactly what I'm doing with running for president. Because there is hope for America yet. There absolutely is. There's great hope. I have a great vision for a 22nd century America, but we have to move past this stain, the stain of the vitriol, the stain of the rhetoric, the stain of you've got to be so extreme on either side in order to even have a microphone, or you have to sell your soul to the devil to get on a platform. Give me a break. I'm not going to play their game. We are changing the rules of the game. We're running a different campaign. It's different than what the establishment knows. It's different than what the political elite knows. And there are a whole bunch of freedom-loving freedom -loving Americans that are behind us because we stand for the Constitution. We stand for the Bible. We stand for right and wrong and the clear distinction between the two for family values. We want a safe America. We want a free America. And we want a prosperous America. And you can't have that and have all of this wicked ideology uh, and celebrating what is wrong and demonizing what is right uh, as a culture. Our American culture must align with our American values for God to bless this nation once again.